All right, in this lesson, we're gonna be looking at the units of production method of allocating depreciation. So let's get started here with, again, understanding the, what a method is. So a method is basically a process to allocating of the cost. So the cost that we're talking about is the co capitalized cost of our long-lived asset. So we've got that capitalized cost and we need a method to allocating that cost over the useful life of the long-lived asset as an expense. So remember that companies can use any method that they would like. And in this lesson, we are talking about the units of production. So the units of production, the assumption here is that the, the use of the asset isn't dictated by time, like the straight line method is. It is dictated by the activity. So the usage of it dictates how much uh, we've used that equipment. So we allocated the depreciable cost by activity rather than time. So for instance, we can use per hour. Now, I know you might look at that and go, isn't that time? Correct, but we're not, we're not depreciating over our constant time, which is clock time, okay? So per hour, so per hour the machine is up and running. So if it's not running, we're not depreciating anything. So that's kind of what we mean there. So per hour, maybe per mile. So if we're using a vehicle, instead of using a straight line or a declining, we base it on miles. So after 100,000 miles, we get rid of the vehicle. So miles is a better indication of depreciation expense than time is. So depending on how fast we get to 100,000 miles dictates that we have more depreciation than how slow we get to 100,000 miles. So per mile, maybe per product that the machine output. So maybe it can only output um, 50,000 items. Then once we get to 50,000, we have to replace the machine. That might be a better one. Printers are ex a great example. So I have a laser printer um, and it's good for maybe 250,000 sheets. And then after that, it kind of just doesn't work anymore. So we could depreciate it by number of sheets printed, for instance, and then per use. So every time we use something, that might be uh, another method for allocating costs. So there's usually some type of activity that drives the usage of depreciation expense. Now, how do we calculate it? It's actually fairly, again, simple. We kind of have to understand the calculation first. And once we have the calculation, then we can just apply that calculation to the actual usage that we have during any given year. So we're gonna take the costs, we're gonna subtract the residual value, and then we're gonna divide it not by useful life in years, Years, but the estimated total production. So the total estimated activity use before we have to replace or dispose of the long-lived asset. Once we do that, that's gonna give us a rate per production. So for instance, it might be the rate per mile. So every mile we drive, we're gonna add this rate as the depreciation expense. Now this equation gives us a rate of production unit. So per mile, per machine hour, per order. We then multiply this number to the number of production units used, okay? So let's walk you through an example to show you how all of this works here. We got our same example with our same equipment. The only difference is they've given us machine hours. So instead of using time of 10 years, we're saying that this machine um, is good for 225, sorry, 220,000 machine hours. After 220, thousand machine hours, it is expected that we dispose of this asset or we sell this asset. So $220,000, they expect to dispose of it by selling it in the secondary market for 55,000. In the first year, uh, the equipment was used 21,000 machine hours and it wants us to calculate depreciation for year one. So we're gonna plug in the numbers that we already know. So our cost here is $295,000. We're gonna subtract our residual value, in this case of 55,000, and then we're gonna divide it by our estimated total production, which would be 220,000 machine hours. When we do that calculation there, we are going to get a dollar oh nine one. Now you can decide to round, maybe not round. It just depends on the question. Um, so sometimes I like to take it a little bit further just so that I have a little bit more precise number. I can tell you that once you do that, uh, your numbers may be a little bit off because it depends on where you round. So again, follow the instructions on a problem. If you're doing that, if this is real life, then decide what you're gonna do. Maybe just to the penny is works best because we can't really like 
pay a tenth of a penny. Okay, so 109 per hour. So for every hour that we use the machine, we are going to book a depreciation expense of $1.09. So in this case, in that first year, we use the equipment for 21,000 hours. So if we take 21,000 multiplied by 1091, we get a total depreciation of 22,000 nine eleven. So that is the amount that we are going to depreciate in that first year. And then the second year, it's going to be dictated on how many machine hours that we use. If we only use one machine hours, the next year, we're only going to depreciate $1.91. Um, if we use it for 100,000 hours, then we're going to multiply that by 109 and we get $109,000. So it's going to fluctuate based on usage rather than being a constant from year to year. And time as an overall factor is not factored into this. So we don't know if we're going to depreciate this for 10 years or five years or three years. It's going to depend on how much we use this machinery. So um, here's just an example. And I know I haven't given you all the numbers, but I've given you machine hours. So the first year is 21,000. Second is 21. Third is 23, 24, 5, 22, 20, 22, 21. 23 and 225. And then the depreciation expense is going to fluctuate based on that machine hour. So obviously they're all going to be just different. And then accumulated depreciation is going to be based on the depreciation of uh, what we've taken so far since we first acquired it. So I just left this 10 years, but it doesn't mean that it actually is 10 years. So we're trying to keep this consistent to what we're learning in straight line and double declining or declining balance method. And so that's what it looks like. But again, at the very end of the day, our residual value and our book value of our asset needs to be the same. So our book value cannot go under our residual value. And so I know you're looking at this and going, well, what's the chances that we hit 220 and then we stop? What about if we go over? We still stop at 220, but we can still use the machine. And that does happen because uh, remember that we're just making an estimate and it's hard to estimate uh, when we actually will stop if we bought it five or 10 years or if we're going to dispose of it 10 years from now. We really don't know how far it's going to go. So we're estimating it. So once we get to 55,000 in our book value, we stop taking depreciation unless new information comes to light that would change that scenario. So that's kind of where we are with that. Um, here is a graphical look just like last time. Notice that again, in this case, we still have this upward bound here. Okay. And then notice here that we have a little bit of, it's hard to see, but a little bit of peaks, a little bit of valleys, a little bit of peaks, straight. So it's not as straight as our straight line method because it's based on production. So if we use it more, we're going to take more depreciation. Use it less, we're going to take less. Now let's look at a graphical view of both of them. So notice if I zoom in a little bit, our red, or sorry, our orange is our straight line method and our blue is our units production. And you notice how, you know, that straight line, it's straight. It stays at $24,000, but that blue one kind of just goes all over the place depending on our usage. And that's how the units of production is used when we look at a depreciation uh, expense per year and its life cycle. So that is a look at the units of production method. Again, it's pretty easy once you've calculated your per production amount. Once you've done that, you just multiply what you used it for by that amount and you get your depreciation for that year. It's going to fluctuate from year to year. So you're going to have to make that calculation every single year until you hit the book value. Uh, sorry, until you, your book value hits the residual value or you dispose of the asset. So hope you enjoyed this lesson on units of production and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patrickleemsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.